Okay, today is the 13th of May 2011, new camera. And after much cajoling by many people, I am going to show you my aquaponics setup. Um, we've just come through a flood and I've sort of got pretty much everything back to where I want it again. An overview of the system. I've been experimenting with the OBCs. I think I've discovered the easiest and the best way of creating one. And it won't be it won't get like like that first one there. It won't be like the second one there with the red bucket. It won't be that one there. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to turn this ABC tote into a functioning aquaponic system and one that is almost cycling immediately. I think I've almost perfected the cycling method uh, with or with, without fish by inoculating the water that you use before you even start construction. My water inoculation system comes from Rainwater caught and collected into my aquarium room. Switch a light on. I've got five tanks, well actually six. That first one there has a whole heap of glad wrap in there on which my bio stuff clings to. A hell of a lot of surface area there. Then comes by siphon into the second tank. I don't know if you can see the size of that water snail. Huge. You also see there are wrigglers in here. They are used to feed the fish. That's the second tank. Then siphons across into third tank, which has got bio balls etc. on the bottom, which goes into the fifth tank here, which has got any meat waste, I'm not sure if you can see down there. Meat waste goes into that tank. And once it's all nicely juicy, it doesn't smell, but when it's all nicely uh, inoculated, it's pumped up into these two tanks. Can't see too much. And these two tanks then gravity feed into any new tanks that I want to have inoculated. So I can get my ammonia nitrite nitrite nitrate system established in a bed. That bed there. The most recent one I've done. This was cycling in just under five days. You can see the water. Clarity of the water. No fish in here at the moment. I need to get a next batch. You see there's lemna growing there, some water lettuces as well. Using this sort of stone, depending on which part of the country or the world you come from. Some people call it pumice, some people call it scoria, some people call it uh, draining gravel. I call it wonderful because it's got so many little porous spots on it. You can see on this one here so much for the bacteria to cling to. Now I took a photo of this and the whole system last week when I planted these out and we have some wongbok just starting to come up. Back here some pak choy just starting to come up. over here any evidence of anything coming up not just yet and this one down the front here is a turnip I've poked in here There's some of them coming up there now this bed hasn't been in existence for anything more than about two weeks this particular bed 
I've constructed in such a way that the fish tank is uh, three rungs with the top just cut off and placed upside down and spun around so you can get access to your water you can hear it aerating in there now straight down that down pipe all the way down to the bottom where it's expelled into the general body the general water body this one here is just in the it's in a cycling out siphoning out process at the moment you see the layer here slowly going down we'll go all the way down to the very bottom here before it cuts off and then it spends the next half an hour filling all the way back up only problem with my location here is I am under all these magnificent river red gums drop seeds and leaves and all sorts of stuff in the bed so it's a constant job to keep them clean it doesn't take much all of my beds utilize filling from pillowcases or pillows you can see here worms haven't quite got into it this piece that I'm holding comes from that bed in the corner there just the top piece of that out put it on top of some fresh fluffiness and just put that over the top of it and that will slowly seep into the one below then the next IVC that I create this comes off fully inoculated to go into the next bed. You can also see here I've got these one of my friends, a little red friend, they do a wonderful job. Also have a don't tell the missus stockings full of crushed eggshells that have been microwaved just to make sure there's no nastiness in it. That helps to stabilize the pH at around about 7.5 2 to 7.5 put all that back on there for now uh, these stones are very alkaline um, my suggestion to people if you have a water saving problem then you probably shouldn't use this rock because um, if you want to rinse these rocks off it's going to take a lot of water I don't rinse because I find that any any of that it ends up in the very bottom down here and it becomes a worm's paradise time for the boys to come home from school that's my alarm this is my uh, floating raft waiting for some media to arrive from eBay so that I can uh, fill them up and start putting some of my seedlings in this is the second style of construction which I don't recommend um, the reason I've got this style at the moment is because I've got peas in here you can see pea there another pea there there should be a couple in here as well climbing peas they'll come up and climb up here when I don't need a climbing uh, lattice work or anything I just take them out and they go away I find that not much water gets in there and they're drilled on the inside down here anyway so any water that does catch goes down and through just drips out the bottom doesn't form any rust but anyway I will go through all of that when I start on that one there and um, just a quick look at these two this was the first one that I bought this is one I picked up on eBay is a wonderful place Let me get in here uh, in here I've got some onion uh, Hunter River white in there in that whole section in this first square here I've got uh, 
another onion this one here I've got a spring onion this one here is a cream gold onion that one there is an Australian brown and that's an onion red